Love respect goes out to the Nanny B and the Jimmy Knuckles in the place and the full crew. What's the time? Man? Right knowledge time. The wild boom, sound right reasoning. It's time to awaken. Mr. Man, if you're in, out there in, across the city and I know you're listening, it's cool in the studio. Also, OG Briggy. Yeah. Massive shout goes out to Natty, Natty Mark and Jimmy Knuckles and Nanny B. Sorry I'm a late London City. Sorry I was on on Wednesday night. Shadow Hour. It wasn't my fault. Station came on too late for me. And said it was in the place and we went straight to the DJ B. So the tape, The Tried of Atom Ra, part two. I'll give you that on Wednesday night. I'll just see you today. I will rerun the first part today. Okay, those that are righteous already and have found the truth, you're full. You're in your garb, you're in your dress. You're right already. Look clear off, I don't want you to listen. Listen at your own peril. Those that will have open minds and are sincere and looking the truth, sit back, relax and listen. Grab a pen and a piece of paper. Take down the quotes halfway through the tape. I'll give out the question and answer. Class is rounded about the capital. So you can check out the information for yourself. But those that are righteous already, you've found what you need. You need what you've got. Clear off. And Errol at the London City, I haven't forgotten you, my brother. I've just been very, very busy. For years now I've been doing this true life show, years, okay? And I know it may sound to some people that I'm an egotistical, arrogant, a person with a nasty attitude, don't let them talk. Goes on like he knows everything. I don't know everything. Look, consider me dunce. Listen to me clear. I am dunce when it comes to knowledge. As a person, consider me a demon then. All right, so that way we can't go wrong. You can't call me nothing worse than that. And I'm saying I'm dunce, all right? If that helps you, then so be it. But forget about criticizing me trying to knock me it's the knowledge it's called the wild science of sound right reasoning deal with that it's called a master teacher okay dr malachi z york i'm a new beaver fear of god incarnate on the planet earth as we are god's new soul If you're out there across the city, give us a call in the studio, please, mystery man. Give me a call in the studio, please, also the OG Briggy. Remember that our glass is almost full. You can't say I haven't told you for all this time. You can't say I didn't tell you for all these years. Year to year I was here. Year to year, here for you. If I miss one, it was on my control but year to year and in that time many a song I uh, wish I took to wait till I see that rebel and when you see me then what all the reason with that rebel I open up the phone lines you don't phone you walk north east south west complain moan to everybody else but me and I'll give you the chance to talk to me direct. Okay, in a few weeks' time, I'll open up the phone lines again. So, all those that want to talk to me directly, you can do so. But in the meantime, students.
Prince of Nuwabu, sound right reasoning. Reinstated in our original culture on the planet Earth. We sit back, relax and listen. Take it in and do something about it. I'm putting out their information. Question them. Ask them where they're leading you to. Where are they leading you to? Where are they leading themselves? Do they know? Do they really know? Are they open? Have, you, have they got your concern in their heart? Is it their egos they're caressing? Many a late comer wants to be a star. What kind of star? A bright moving star. A lalba, a shakar, a demon. For what? For praise? For what? Money? Fame and fortune? You see, you're known in the community. That's some righteous chap. Hey, 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 I ain't no righteous chap. Regular bread art from the roads. I don't know everything, but I do want to know. But I know how God that does. Who is that? Our master teacher. Listen to me again. Our master teacher. Here for us to serve us. Okay, so what am I here for? To point you in the right direction for your children's sake and your children's sake alone. Forget about us adults, man. We've done pass it and mess up already. But the children, we can put pure information in their minds. None of that filthy, nasty crap. None of that crap that I'm out to destroy. None of that false Luciferian doctrine that has mislead and suppressed our people for thousands of years. It's time for it to go. It's the sun cycle time. I remember what I said, if you are righteous already, clear off. Go and say your prayers. Read your Bible, your Quran. And look, Juma, you should be in there if you're Muslim. And clear the heck off and leave me alone. Now those that want to know, sit back, relax and listen. Because it's your time now. Okay? It's the triad of Atom Re, okay? These are free students of the Wabu, free students of the master teacher. Check them out for yourself. Sit back, relax, and listen, and here we go. Telephone number in the studio. For any comments or suggestions in what you're about to hear. 7 5477 those of you that go and phone the DTI and complain and winch the other DJs, and look, there's nothing you can do about it. Don't you see? Call me direct. 0795-777-5477. Maybe your God can help you. Peace.
triad of Hatsum Bay would like to welcome you to Tamaray, Egypt of the West, on this 15th day of the seventh month of our Swabian calendar. And it's important that we attune ourselves to our Nawabian calendar so that we are not blinded that we know exactly what day and time that we are in and not the Gregarian calendar. But we must teach you from the Gregarian calendar to raise you to levels of degrees till you know exactly what time that we're in. The elders have given us an uplifting word for the 361 days of our calendar. And the uplifting word that has been given to us this day is that you were taught, so now you must teach. And overstanding each and every one of you who are responsible for this information because you too will be responsible for going out and teaching. It is one of the ways that we will become divine. Make teaching your job to be serious about teaching. This is a great day and time that we're in. This is a day and time that all of the prophecies of the scriptures are being fulfilled. So we, the triad of Atum Re, are here to raise you in degrees with the knowledge that's coming from down on high, the science of the Wapu, to break the spell. Because we are in true need of spiritual upliftment and break out of the bondages that has kept us trapped by beliefs, by myths, and most of all, by religion. We now are at the point where we're about to embark on the mystical meanings of the mysteries of ancient Egypt. We're going into the true meaning of HTM. In the lesser degrees, we were taught that HTM meant the Holy Tabernacle Ministry. But now that we've passed through the three degrees, being Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, we are ready to take on the real meanings of HTM. H representing Heliopolis, that was governed by a great deity, Amun, in ancient Egypt. T representing Thebes, representing the god of Atun. And then Memphis, or me, M, for HTM. And all of these are the schools of our learning that we're about to embark on. So it's a great and it's a wonderful day. So we're not taught to be preachers. We are teachers. So we ask that you use this opportunity to elevate your state of mind by asking us questions. Over the degrees that the elders have given us by way of the scrolls, for the last 30 years, you may ask us questions on that. By the way of the divine scriptures that have coming up, the holy tablets, you may ask us questions on that. And by all of the tapes that you've listened to, by the 19th of the 24 elders, who you know is Aperti Atumre, you may ask us questions on that. So we'd like to take on this opportunity to address any questions that you may have. And there are those out there that, out there that have been coming to most of the classes, and we would like to hear from you, or you may have a question. This is not just a, a session where we just address people coming for the first time and their questions. All of us are still being elevated and raised in degrees. So we would like to make you feel as comfortable as we can and get the car, class started. If anyone has any questions, we'll do our best as representatives and the triad of Atum Ray to answer your questions. Does anyone have any questions at this time? Go ahead, back, Luke. Um, on page 119 of the updated tablets, uh, it implies that the beginning of the sun cycle is 2000. But I recall reading at one time that the beginning was in 1970 of the Gregorian calendar. Could you clarify that for me, please? I'll do my best. From the year 1970 to the year 2000 represents the period of now. Although it's 30 years, it's a period of now. It's a consciousness time zone. We'll have all of that period of time in order to get this profound information, 76 trillion years of information into our heads. When we were taught by the elders, starting off in 1967, they started off teaching us this science of Nawapu and found that because we were in the depths of beliefs that they would have to systematically, strategically break certain barriers of the spell 
so that they would be able to give us what we really needed. So they had to use the methodology of giving us what we want so that we would learn to advance in degrees of what they really have to give. This is at the point that we are now. Now from 1970 on into 2000, there was three periods of now, although this was a whole period of now in those 30 years. The three periods of now were the three periods of time that the vortex would open up. The first being 1973. Had it not been for an experiment that was done in 1943, 1970 would have been the year that it would have naturally opened up. 1983 was the second period of time. But in 1983, we were still in the ignorance of religion. We still had questions based on the spell of religion. And we didn't understand, we were merely in an understanding that religion was the one that was trapped in the shackles of our mind and stifling our ability to become gods. Then we had the period of 1993. And it was only one year after embarking on an eight year mission in order to be elevated to the state and time that we're in now. So 1970 is the starting point of a cycle. The exact period that it would take this planet and this whole solar system to rotate around the whole galaxy would be 24,896 years. The wise rounded off to the nearest hundred, so it would be 25,000 years in totality. So that would be part of the cycle. This event occurs only once every 25,000 years, and be on your guard because the Luciferians who come in many forms, many different shades within the human race, they too know this information and they will try to stop us in every way to stifle our growth. So they started from 1970 is when it was the awakening period, the coming in of the sun cycle and coming out of the moon cycle that was governed by these Luciferian forces these reptilian beings, these water beings who was governing the planet, who was here on the planet prior to the crash and resided in the Atlantic Ocean that scientists recently discovered as the Bermuda Triangle. And they were here prior to the Adama Project. So they were ones who were trying to keep us under control because they knew of the nature that we had and the essence of the universal divine mind that we were elevating into. So on into the year 2000, would be the point in time where the planets will have aligned themselves. And in that alignment, that it referred to as May 5th, the year 2000, is when, if the planet is wobbling, as it does, because people as smaller entities on the planet can be, can be drawn into the sun and cause a star holocaust. And that's why all of the ancients had prophesied that the year 2000 would be the end of the world. They were basing that or an actual event that occurs every 25,000 years. And every 6,000 years, as it shifts from a moon cycle on into a sun cycle, and into a sun cycle again, and then another moon, two cycles each of every 25,000 year period. So they knew this. So from 1970 all the way to the year 2000 would be when the Earth positions itself in a revolution of location, and although we calculate in, in degrees by one year at a time, of 365 days as the Earth spins on its axis, it's still a whole period of now. But we still have to realize that we have a whole another 30 years because as they uh, took out our real calculations of time, our real calculation of time would be how do we calculate our time in various sectors of the universe. We see that as the Earth rotates around the sun, we calculate and we call that a year. And as the Earth spins on its axis, axis and its right now at a slanted of 23 degrees. But all of the turmoil that's on our way is because the Earth will eventually be shifted back to perpendicular. And if we're no longer in tune with the planet, and we're not in tune as the planet metamorphosizes and transforms from third density to fourth density, then we will be fleas, like on a dog, that it scratches away. So we have another period of 30 years all the way up until 2030, that is our time based on 60. So it starts off by having 60 seconds in a minute, right? But the seconds that we calculate is really the second unit of our time and not the first. When you see a second hand moving on a clock, it would calculate two different movements and that would be one second. But they call it correctly a second. 
but that's usually the first measurement in our time. What about the first? We have been calculating the beats and ignoring the rest. And in ignoring the rest, according to the Gregorian calendar, each year or every four years, the leap year, they would have to add more or subtract more periods of time in order to recalibrate that. But what it does over a period of time is how does that align us with the universal forces? How does that align the galaxy as it makes its orbit around the universe? We wouldn't know and we wouldn't be in tune. So that's why we have been blessed by the ancient ones, by the elders, to be able to uh, give us a new system of calculating our time. Again, this would be the 15th day of the seventh month. Most of us refer to it as the 11th month or the first day. And if we do that, we will not be properly in tune. So, sister, we are in the sun cycle, as is, is explained, but it's calculating a larger period of time and not just the years or as the Earth spins around the sun. You follow? Are there any other questions? Yeah, I'll, I'll go back. Uh, I have three questions, but... Uh, um, in the New Holy Tablet, it says, um, um, I'm kind of interested in, um, like, what was the conflict between Anu and his brother, and, you know, when Anu became ruler, what, I'm, I'm kind of curious of what was the conflict that caused that, you know, outbreak? Being the most hot, the same conflict that you had with all runners standing on the starting line, and as the gun goes off to see who is the fastest. The same type of conflict went on then to see who was actually the most high or the ruler of the universe, who would be able to answer all of the questions, who would be the keeper of right knowledge, not just the teacher of right knowledge. Here we are teachers of right knowledge and not the keepers of right knowledge. There's certain questions that as being the keepers of right knowledge will prove to the universal beings that we are, yes, the most high of all in all intelligence. So this was the type of conflict that was going on. And understand that when we're looking at Anu being elevated from the three degrees of religion, most people make the mistake in replacing the God or Allah or Yahweh or Theos, whatever name has been associated with the creator or the ruler of the universe and associate these titles to Anu. The same way in learning the mystical teachings in ancient Egypt, they associate this with Ra which was the ancient Egyptians saw as the sun. And, and the teachings of Heliopolis would be the city of Anu. Anu is merely a title, on high. So it's ruling a particular group of beings from the star constellation of Iliun on down into the beings who they procreated in their image and after their likeness. You follow? So we're in our ignorant state of mind, we're looking for someone to lean on. Even, and it says there in those scriptures that he breathed of his essence into Adam and Adam became a spirit that lived. So that means that the true essence of the Most High would be in each and every one of us. So after periods of time where this information was once back and then it became watered down into myths and to beliefs into where we are today, they taught, they knew that the journey would be inward. All of the ancients knew that the journey of finding that divine force in you would be in, in, in traveling on an inward journey to pull out the essence, not something that's unintangible. So one of the ways that they en enhance us with the spell of sixth ether or ghostism, is what we talk about, is to get you to worship or to look for, to send your energies out into an unattainable force on the outside. You follow? So you're dealing with a title, you're dealing with, you're dealing with beings as, as we've been blessed with the elders that have the wisest or that have the most information on the planet, as we're being elevated degrees and as we're teaching you and you're being taught, when you're in a group, group of people that are in a state of ignorance, you become the wisest person that they've ever encountered. Until you welcome here to the class, then we as the triad appear to be the wisest people that they've ever come in contact with. You follow? Until they come in contact with Atum Re, who is the, of this triad, then he would be. And so it goes on and on. So there's not a question that we in this state would be able to ask these elders or the Elohim or the Netir. You follow? But, they, but in dealing with the title of Anu, then they would have to submit. So all humble and spiritual beings 
the Elohim Anunnaki would give respect to him and want to be like him. Can I ask my um, second question? Yes, sir. Okay, um, on the incarnation of uh, Tammuz, um, I understand that it's going to be uh, something like a chirogenetics. And could you um, emphasize you know, that, that process or how it's going to return? Okay, when you look at science today, and it was hard to talk about this information, say, 30 years ago, because the scientific community hadn't caught up. So when you look at the book of Luke, and the first chapter in the 28th verse, and it is given the birth of the incarnation of Tammuz, talking about Jesus, right, or Yahshua, right, it, it leaves us in a state of ignorance, and we are having to accept faith that he was born of an immaculate conception. An immaculate conception, meaning God came down and did not touch this virgin, and yet she gave birth to God. Now, when we go and we try to question that, even before we were institutionalized by a religion, as little children, we honestly ask, well, how was this done? You see? Now, that they have the ability, like uh, in virtual fertilization, to be able to isolate a gene, right, and splice the gene and the DNAs of the gene, and to be able to implant the other DNAs of, a, of, a, of another male, like for example, if you were about to pass on to a higher life, and you wanted to impregnate your, your, your wife, right, they could literally free, freeze the sperm and then to inject it later on, you follow? And then they would be able to tailor make the, uh, the genetics of, of another person to bear, you can actually have a physical sexual act but it wouldn't be your DNAs and RNAs, it would be someone else. This was done with Gabriel for the seed Tammuz, because it would be the manifestation of perfection there in the flesh. So each and every one would uh, herald in this being. First one being Elijah, right? And then well, that would be an Elohim Yahuwah. And that happened at three periods of time already. And then he would herald in the supreme being. In this case, a supreme being. Every 25,000 year cycle, a being that has the ability to answer all the questions to a confused world incarnates into the flesh. And this, in this case, prepares and opens it up for the coming of Sananda. So here, the Federation has to prepare a selected few to be able to take them out of this poisoned world and use them to, uh, to genetically breed with them, to be able to repopulate the planet. The same thing that was done with the meteorite showers before, with the dinosaurs. They had to go and then breed in and then repopulate the planet. And the same thing is being done in this day and time with the 144,000. You follow? So according to what they're talking about, that there's a, a being coming back in order to save you as your savior, and we're supposed to lean on him and grovel at him, that is not going to happen. That is not what took place in the ancient tablets. The message of this being coming back, you can go all the way back to Genesis, when you see the fourth chapter in the 26th verse, where a new type of being was on the planet. Those were enocytes, immortal. New type because they were supreme beings. They were gods with all of the faculties to be rulers of the universe. But then it was taken away, and then they was confined on the planet. So they had all of the abilities without the access of it. So it was decided that they would send one to govern over the men. And that one would be Tammuz. Now all of the mortals at the time were not, it, or did not adhere to that doctrine. One such is when you read, and going into the 11th uh, chapter, when you start talking about the, the Gilgamesh epic, whose name was Nimrod whose real name was Saragar, who opposed the teachings of Tammuz. But then you, you read on from the Quran that Abraham was then sent. And he was the one that because the religion that Tammuz had put forth in order to elevate these mortals was not working. So they would, instead of seeing a seen deity, it would be an unseen deity. And Abraham was the one to start to elevate and raise in that degrees. 
but you had one such as Nimrod or Sargon who opposed that. And he wanted to have direct contact to El. And so you see there in the, in the 11th chapter the story that all of the people of Telman, which would have been the fortress of Anu. So Nimrod stayed stood fast to the worship of El Elyon, the highest, and not going to the intercessors of Envy or Enlil or Tammuz. And he wanted to deal direct because he saw himself as a god the same way as Tammuz saw himself as a god. And when they created Adam and his uh, children in their image and after their likeness, they saw them as gods as well. So that's why they had to name them to remove the burial gland. So we're coming into a cycle of time where we have to be elevated to be in the image and after likeness of these elders the same way that Zarkar was. You see, before he was uh, cast out, before he was away with, that he lived by the knowledge and not by faith. And that's what we're trying to elevate to now, living by the knowledge and not by the faith. So not necessarily having the faith that someone is going to come to save us because the helping hand that we're looking for is at the end of our arm. Did that help you, brother? Um, also, I have two more questions. One is in the Holy Tablets. One is about um, Sahidus, the father of Eve. And um, he's a draconian. But I'm, I'm curious that where did his seed come from other than the Meldekian planet? I don't, I don't know if I'm wrong. As, as, as draconians, as, as reptilians, you follow? Which, which we're looking at the products of inter, intermingling those, uh, those genetics. Each and every one of us have reptilians in our genes. Or coming from it. But when you're talking about beings who was, or, or looked like uh, frogs, as or what they refer to, you see the pictures there in the Holy Tablets, or as the troglodytes. That, that is where their genetics originate. But having uh, landed on the earth and controlling the earth and setting up the uh, magnetic bridge that's on the planet, they already had the planet conducive for their way of life. But the planet had multiple different uh, living conditions because it had surface environments, right? And it also had the sea environments, and then it also had underneath the earth. You, you follow? So when the Rastians came, and looking for a place in order to mine gold, right? They, they made several trips over the planet and because they had crashed into the planet and set up the asteroid belt, they saw within the asteroid belts was an abundance of gold particles. And so after they had uh, cloned uh, biological extraterrestrial entities, referred to as the Greys, to scout out, they knew that Earth had the precise amount of gold that they would need in order to repair, repair their home planet. So they had to peacefully coexist with these draconians. So one of the ways to develop an alliance was to take a daughter of the president and it was ruling Tiamat at the time, and that was Sidi over the reptilians. You follow? And then in bringing them together, then you had Enki, who was half Christian, and then also half reptilian. And then his son, Merodach, was also half reptilian and half uh, pristine as well. You follow? So, so we as being in their image and after their likeness has that in our genetics as well. You follow? So they're coming from the Draco star constellation or the constellation where beings were reptilian. Now in that star constellation there's various different planets and you have different species coming from uh, the different planets that are in that star constellation or the six star constellation. You follow? My next question is based on, um, you know, because we're preparing for survival and things like that, based on emotions. And um, when you tell people about things that they have to do, you know, is it wrong not to, have, you know, like, for instance, you try to tell people that you love, you know, things that's going to happen and try to prepare them for things, for instance, um, the um, destructions that's going on on this planet. And they're caught up into a different frame of mind than what we are here right now. How do you go by? I'm, I'm gonna see, you know, how I go by because I know. Well, well, welcome to the club. I know. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is what we've been doing, and this is our mission. It becomes our job, right? And although that people are looking for 
a way in order to survive all the way up until the end. We have to reach as many people as we possibly can. You follow? And so it's the same way that in the ancient tablets that you read that Murdoch was converted from a disagreeable to an agreeable, meaning that he had to be convinced that he was indeed a god. Remember, all of the audio tapes that I played on the 916 on the True Light Show are available at the fraternities and bookstores around about the capital. I buy it. I'm to convince you that you two are God. And that's the hardest thing. Because that is what they took and took us out and blinded us by the spell. To get us, rather than to do things on our own, but to get another force that we would hope for, that we would wish for, that we would believe in. You follow? So the same way that he had to be convinced of that, the same way that we're now trying to convince. And that's the, the job that you would take on with yourself, for, for those people that you care about, you would have to convince them. And the best way in order to persuade them or to convince them would be to your example, by way of your example. Why should they give up their luxuries or their seemingly luxuries, right, and to drop all that and start to suffer and to prepare themselves, right, for what is about to befall the planet? Why should they do that? And so they're looking at you based on the example that you're giving. Right? And what happens is, is that when we don the feathers and we don the title as Nawabians, most of us like to straddle the fence. Meaning that we say that yes, we're, we're all about it. That yes, we dedicate our whole lives to the mission. But yet, when it comes to suffering and sacrificing, we don't want to give those things up. And so when those calamities start to befall the planet, these are things that's been talked about for the last 30 years. And now you can see that it's these things are happening. You'd clearly be able to see uh, in about 15 days. And that would be when the meteorites, you know, will start to shower the planet. They've already started. They've already started to hit the planet and have been, those particles that are hitting the planet have been electrified, right, in the air. And that's why you sometimes have these tremendous headaches now. Because it's already happening now. You follow? So now this. It's a late day in time that if you've been sitting there waiting and doubting that you want to come and be a part of it now. You know what I'm saying? You had already had to be sacrificed. So when you're trying to convince people, they're looking at your example. And that's why sometimes it becomes hard. Okay? Damn, I'm comfortable. And with that, I'll pass, with all due respect, the pieces on to my brother, Paul Fulton. concept of the universe and is there more than one universe and how did that universe get started and is Ilium in the same universe as we are? We'll do our best. As was taught to us by our ancients or our elders, 24 in number, and being the triad of Atumare, as was taught to us by our elders, when you speak of universes, let's start the, this way. Let's first deal with the solar system that you're in. You're in this solar system, which is called solar system. The reason they make reference to it as a solar system is the word sol, meaning sun. Overstood. This is a one sun system that we're living in. Now, the same way it, within this system, you have nine planets as they're logging it today. Originally, they'll say there was 10, some say 11, and some even say 12 when they count or chart Nibiru as it passes through. Okay. When you realize that your solar system or the planets in this system are rotating on their, each one on their own axis and at the same time rotating around this sun as you look up behind you, well, this is the same thing when you move from solar systems, you step on into galaxy, galaxies. This, this is something you can go to any library and look up. And then from libraries, you move on into universes. Everything is expanding. Your solar system is expanding. It's rotate, as your planets rotate around the sun, 
your solar system is also rotating around the central sun, which you make reference to as a galaxy. And just as your galaxy, or excuse me, as your galaxy is also rotating around a central sun called the universe. There are multiple universes. Yes, Iliun is in the same universe as this uh, solar system. Understood? Your solar system's galaxy is known as the what, everyone? Say it again. The Milky Way, which is the 18th galaxy. On the other side would be the 17th, which you make reference to as Orion. On the other side of this would be the 19th galaxy, which is made reference to as Iliun. Understood? And it's the 19th galaxy of this universe that you're in. Any complaints? Simple, plain truth. How comes you can't recognize the truth? What's the matter with you? You're stupid. Look, we all look up there. We see the sky, you know, cars. You see a wall, a house. We can all recognize and see the same things. Facts are facts. The house is the house. The chair you're sitting on is the chair you're sitting on. The car you're driving is the damn car you're driving. But where does your common sense stop? Where? Where? You tell me where. Where does your common sense stop? Crazy. Okay. What do you think of the first half of that tape anyway? That's a triad of Atomre. Okay. The Supreme Grand Master, students of the Master Teacher, teaching the Wabu sound right, reasoning, reinstilling our original culture on the planet Earth, reinstilling our original language, our own way of life, our Father, our Father, in our image and after our likeness. When we find it, find your way home. Now, question and answer classes ran and about the capital on the information you heard and saw knowledge and information and books on every subject under and above the sun and beyond i'll give you the information so it's up to you from now on but don't think i'm here unsincere like i'm here wanting to be a star like i'm getting paid for it like anybody's patting me on the back for me no and i don't want it neither i know what i know you know so i'm just gonna pass it on to you Sincere, it's called sincere because I mean it wholeheartedly. South London branch, okay. This fraternity is round and about the capital. You may keep your religion because this is not a religion and sit down with your religion and study at any one of the fraternities round and about the capital. Don't say you didn't hear. South London branch, unit 25. Eurolink Business Centre, 49 Ether Road, London SW2, that's Unit 25, Eurolink Business Centre, 49 Ether Road, London SW2, telephone number for further inquiries, 0171. Nine seven eight eight three two one. That's zero one seven one nine seven eight eight three two one. Classes held each and every Wednesday evenings between the hours of seven thirty and nine thirty. 
Sunday between the hours of 3 and 6. Okay, that's Unit 25, Euroling Business Centre, 49 Ifa Road, classes Wednesday, 7.30 to 9.30, Sundays 3 to 6. Okay, we have the MAT Academy. That's the MAT, M-A-A-T Academy, 10 to 16 Ashwood Street. That's Dools 38. Phone number for, for further inquiries down there, 0171. Two five four six double four two classes held each and every Wednesday evenings between the hours of seven and ten. Sunday between the hours of four and seven thirty. That's ten to sixteen Ashwin Street, Dalston E8. You see the studio mashing up its driver in the place. Okay. Drivers in the place mashing up the studio. Alright, West London Brown. Woolsden Library Centre, 95 High Road, Woolsden Green. That's Woolsden Library Centre. Ninety-five High Road, Woolsden Green, NW10. Telephone number for further inquiries down there, 0468144696, that's 0468. High Street, Thornton Heath. Surrey Crane, that's 39. High Street, Thornton Heath, Surrey Crane. Telephone number down there for further inquiries 0181 239 0939. Class is held each and every Wednesday evenings between the hours of 7 and 10, Sunday afternoons 2 to 5. That's at 39 High Street, Fulton Heath, Surrey Crider. Remember, these are all, all absolutely free to attend. There is no collection tray, nobody begging your money, nobody begging you anything. You don't have to go, but it'd be wise to go for your children's sake. So forget about yourself for a little while. What does that mean? Well, put yourself aside to go down there to observe the information because you will die and leave your children. And leave them money maybe, yeah. And wealth. But what about the way home? What about that? You give up responsibility there or your ego getting in there, you're tripping out there. Who the hell are you? Okay, also at 39 High Street, Thornton Heath. Each and every Tuesday between the hours of 7.30 and 9.30, there's Nuwabic language lessons. That's Nuwabic language lessons. That's our original language. Before all of the riffraff, mumbo jumbo that we speak now across the continent of Africa, here, there, everywhere. The original language, our original language. And what the hell am I doing wrong by telling you this, huh? But you have me up, huh? Okay. And also, 25, okay, Unit 25, Euroleague Business Centre, 49 Effa Road, Brixton, each and every Saturday between the hours of 6 and 7.30 in the evening. 
the Wabic classes, okay, anywhere you can learn your original language there. Also, straight after that, you'll get a video absolutely free by the master teacher. And you can sit down, reason with the members of the United Nawabian Nation of Moors and the Nawabians. And get a further insight and hook up with the elite. And we don't want in every Tom, Dick and Dam, Harry, Riff, Raff, fool. Just those that are sensible and want to get the job done and can see what the mission is which is to raise the children, the elite, for the return of our ancestors and the tomb. So you got to get your light shining right. So I'm here to try and wake you up, Lazarus. And many of Lazarus has, has awoken and, and, and that got on a different mission. Hey, when I wake you up, come this way. I'll clear the heck out of the way. You can't stop this. You can never stop this. Your stuff is perishing. All of your Luciferian doctrine from the Bible, Quran, Torah, all your Hindu books, all of it perishing, perishing things. Now the master teacher has written over 400 books on every subject under and above the sun listen to me again the master teacher has written over 400 books on everything under and above the sun and challenged by any demon or black devil on the earth never to be proven wrong addresses everybody but they don't address him why because they can't they address one another their dinkies all kind of crap but they do not address the master teacher because they cannot and will not, and shall not. So you the lost sheep, you can moan and wind as much as you want. Your leaders won't do it. But you can if you want to, it's on the internet. Go and check it out. Okay, there's bookstores around right about the capital. All right, north, south, east and west. Start off first with the, the Design Works. That's The Design Works Park Parade Halston NW10. That's the, the, the Design Works Park Parade Halston NW10. Telephone number for further inquiries 0181 838 5999. Also at Tottenham, Seven Sisters Road, Indoor Market. That's Tottenham, Seven Sisters Road, Indoor Market. Telephone number for further inquiries, 0181-809-0284. Also at the Stratford Shopping Centre, Unit 25. Telephone number for further inquiries. 0956-521-496 Also at 25 Brixton Station Road That's SW9, telephone number down there 0171-978-8321 Old tight Jason, Shamoon and the Massive GI down there Also at 42 Bulls Pond Road, Islington That's 42 Bulls Pond Road, Islington, Holt, Ahel and Mikael do down there, the Dulston Massive. That's Islington, 42 Bulls, Bulls Pond Road, Islington. Telephone number for further inquiries, 0171-254-6442. And again at unit 63 to 64. Agora Indoor Market 137 to 139 Riley Peckham SE15 telephone number down there 0171 277 9793 Also another bookstore at 39 High Street Fulton Heath Surrey That's 39 High Street Fulton Heath Surrey Craig Telephone number down there again 0181 239 
0939. Uh, you know, I'm trying to speed through this because, you know, I know CB2 fans is never late, so I'm going to have to finish at 2 o'clock and I've got the other side of the tape to play. Okay, so I've given out any of that information too quickly for you. You can call me in the studio, 0795-777-5477. As Ra graces the planet Earth, 0795-777-5477. Any comments or suggestions on the True Light Show, email me on wrwec at westminster.ac. UK. That's W-R-W-E-C at Westminster.ac.uk. Okay, we're going to go straight back into the triad of Atamra as taught by the 24 elders. Free the Hawana. <laughs> okay, we reverse the technology and here we go. Peace. And there's boundless universes. See, because of religion, religion has us looking to go to one point or one place and say beginning. As our elder, the ancient one of the 20 and 4, has always taught us, when you speak of beginning, even in beginning, you're losing something. See, Christians want to say, well, in the beginning, God said. But the minute you said, in the beginning, God said, you admitting that there wasn't a beginning. Why? Because you said God said. Well, what did he do before he said? That would make something existing before a beginning. They don't want to take you into to that level of information. This is why it's necessary that the ancient ones have raised up amongst us 24 elders, as you're sitting here in large number 19, where we have Nietzsche Rafirti at Ray. And of these 24 elders, there are different teachers that must go out to right the wrong of the world that we're living in today. You've been taught misinformation in astronomy. You've been taught misinformation in biology. You've been taught misinformation called or termed history. You've been taught misinformation by way of religion. You've been taught misinformation by way of the music that we're listening to. All of the things that we've been taught are misinformation. But the hardest problem that we're having, that you, you have on a day-to-day -day basis, as you go out to deal with people, is getting people to realize that all that we've been taught is right is really wrong, and all that we've been taught is wrong is really right. What do we mean by that? Quite simply, in religion, you were taught, thou shalt not kill. Does everybody say that? But you never did question God and say, well, why'd you kill the Egyptians? Why'd you kill the people in Sodom and Gomorrah? Well, that's because they were evil, brother, because that's what they'll say. But the reality is, if you say, thou shalt not kill, then there should be no exception to the rule. Well, this is the same thing religious people would do. They'll say, on one hand, Muslims, that we shouldn't kill any believers. Muslims shouldn't kill Muslims. But then Iraq, Muslim country, they say, blows up and sends bombs to Iran, Muslim country, they say. But when you hit them with that reality that's from their holy book called the Quran, they'll say, well, no, brother, that's different because, see, they're Sunni and we're Shiite. But we can't find Sunni nor Shiite in their holy book called the Quran. These are the types of games they play. You understand, brother? And this is why it's necessary that we go out to right the wrong. We're not concerned with religious ideologies. We're not concerned with... Genesis, 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 they might have started for the show. Okay, telephone number for further inquiries into what you're listening to, 795 just messing up your tape as well, peace. We're not concerned with religious ideologies, we're not concerned with opinions, we're only concerned with righting the wrong by way of the facts beyond any doubt. Go ahead. Gen Genesis in my okay. How did our universe start? 
if you go back to Al's holy tablets by Aloha al Budus, it is explained in there how you had three sons. One called what? Say it. But before that, they made reference to Saul. And remember Om? How many people remember reading this? This is explaining the birth of what you're calling your universe. When they speak of Om, that was the birth of this universe. By the time you got to Saul, it was the birth of your solar system. With that Saul, Solar, Saul, you hear it? You understand? This is explained in the Holy Tablet. This is why it's necessary for us to digest this Holy Tablet. This is why it's necessary, the brothers writing it on the board, for us to read this information. This is why this, 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 this level of information was put forth in this day and time. It could not have been put forth prior to this because we weren't ready. We were so busy wanting what we wanted that we weren't prepared for what the elders had to give. You understand? Now, if you go back and read it in the Holy Tablets, that will enable you to come back with a better question. You understand? That way we can take the information as the triad of Atumbe, we'll be able to take the information to another level. Understand? Any other questions? Back in uh, 1940, um, Philadelphia experiment was done by Tesla, and then the uh, gentleman Von Neumann in 1930, but I'd like to know how did Eldridge Forsell? The USS Eldridge? Okay. Uh, was this Joe for a second? Okay. First of all, when you said that Tesla did the experiment in 1940, in 1940 it was called the Rainbow Project. It wasn't called the Philadelphia Experiment. So when you remember, make sure when you go and research it, we make sure that we clear that up. It was the Rainbow Project of 1940. Now, in 1943, Nikola Tesla was working on the Philadelphia Experiment. This is made reference to in the book, Man for Planet Risk. Now, when you read there, it tells you that the problem was not the USS Eldridge, because when they ran what was called a dry run in 1940, the U.S. At, as, uh, Eldridge, when there was no men or people, crew members on the craft, they were able to perform. For those of you who never heard what we're talking about, let's bring you up to part. During the 1940s, as America was in a war or engaging in a battle against Germany, which you refer to as the First World War, at the time, in 1940, there were certain scientists, German scientists, some Albert Einstein, others Nikola Tesla, others von Neumann, others, Schrodinger, there's many more. These were the best or top nuclear physicists, chemists, bioengineers that were existing on the planet at the time. The American government at the time were trying to get these scientists, one in particular, Nikola Tesla, to work on an experiment that would enable them to have their ships be invisible to the German radar. At this same time, you had taken place over in Princeton, New York, the experiment known as the Manhattan Project, where Ivan, uh, Albert Einstein was working on creating what you refer to later as the nuclear bomb, or the atom bomb. How many people have heard of this? Okay, make sure we're all together. This is some of us are here for the first time. Now, when this experiment, going to the uh, Rainbow Project of 1940, they were able to make the ship invisible to radar. Now, the next problem was, how could they have crew members on it and also make it happen? Now, there were those who knew, such as Nikola Tesla, that the human body has a biorhythm, that you are a living entity, and that Mother Earth, or Gaia, matter nature, or Mother Nature, is also a living entity that lives and breathes, etc. Now, the problem wasn't the ship system. It wasn't so much the eldritch. It was the fact that they had people on it and they were hoping, since they were using military men or Navy men, that everyone would follow protocol. They all went to sleep a certain time, they would all eat certain times. And any of us who've ever been in the military, any of us out here today who've ever been in the military knows that people don't follow protocol even in the military. How many people have been in the military? Okay. People come and eat late, they eat more than they're supposed to, they don't exercise. So when they did the Philadelphia experiment in 1943, when they threw the switches, everyone's zero time reference or point of their existence was off. The result of this was when this vortex opened, some were snatched thin by different reptilians and grays that were in there. 
Because remember, a vortex is a sphere of energy that encompasses all time and space. It is drawn, or it would be the same as, and Brother Jordan the for us, but it would be the same, some will say similar to a black hole. Or if you took a spoon, put it in a cup of water or tea or coffee or salt, whatever it is you're drinking, and you stir it as fast as you could, when you remove that spoon out, you would see in the center what they would call today a whirlpool. Or even in your bathtub when you pull the, what's the word? The plug or the drain out, you would see it go down. Well, this is the same thing that was taking place. Some were merged in. Some became a part of the ship because their viral rhythms was on. Over there. This was the problem. It wasn't the elders that were the problem. It was the fact that you had different people with different biorhythms. This is why, in this day and time, it is necessary for us to gather and do the affirmation at 3 o'clock Sunday. So that we begin to get in sync with one another as this planet is going through its shift. Remember, your planet is now, religious people don't get so much in an uproar by what we're saying. Just take the time to go and do a little bit of research to find out for yourself. Your planet is going through a shift. Your planet is on a 23 degree axis, 23 and a half to sun. And it's now shifting. This is something that has been taking place for a while now. Earlier the system was mentioning about the Aquarian era. When this 1970, uh, what they call the dawning of the age of Aquarius, when this was taking place, this is when your planet began its major shift, a crust shift. Over third, and this is the same problem that we're having today. The major problem with the USS Eldridge or in the Philadelphia experiment was because August 12th of that particular year, had they done it on August 11th or had they done it on August 13th, it would not have been a problem. But because they did it on August 12th, and that was the birthday of Mother Earth. So she was peaking. She was going through her bio rhythms, and everything was thrown. Over Any other questions? Go back. Okay. Um, I was reading in the tablets about the Earth being four times the size it is now, and due to different crafts and different events happening on the planet, it, it, it decreased in size. When the planet was at its normal size, how did the waters on the planet work? Because it didn't have a moon. Because the moon was a part of the earth at one time. I want to. I, I don't what, understand. What do you mean? How did the waters on the planet? Work? Because the moon pulls on the, the earth's waters, and Doc said without the moon that the, the planet will overheat. And I, I want to understand. Well, without the moon, say it again. Without the moon. Without the moon, how how would how would the earth? You know what I'm saying? Stay cool. Like yeah, the tides and everything. How would everything work? Remember, prior to this crash of the Beetle, when it came through, or actually the Beetle didn't crash, there was the four crafts or the four winds that they made reference to in the book of Revelations. Prior to this, this whole planet was a water planet. So you're saying the earth needs to cool. There was not a necessity for the earth cooling when there was no dry land. This is what you find mentioned in the book of Genesis of your Bible when it says, and the earth was void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep and there was not yet dry land to appear. You understand? Prior to that, this was a water planet. See, the, the trick was in calling it Earth that you didn't, weren't able to see it. When they said Earth, how, how was it, as we're taught by the ancients, by our elders, the 24 in number, and being in large 19, as we're taught by the 19th elder, how is it that you're living on a planet that's three-fourths of water, yet they call it Earth? See, the original name was Tiamat, or Tiamantu. They had different names depending on which societies of beings that were here and some that came here were dealing with. This whole planet at the Genesis time was a water planet. But this is prior to your moon breaking on, which now scientists Genesis are admitting to. Genesis They're also admitting to the fact that the moon is now moving away from the planet. This whole system is changing. And the effects, we're feeling the effects daily. Whether it be in the sense of the meteorites that are already coming, you see them now, you call them shooting stars. Oh, I see so many shooting stars on the meteorites that are passing the planet. And these headaches that all of us, or some of us are starting to get, especially if you live in these major cities and headaches right here, is just don't seem to go away. It's nothing spiritual. It's the ionized particles of metal in the atmosphere because of the meteorite shower that's also being heated up by the rays of the sun. 
You understand? So make sure when, uh, when you're reading it, understand when you speak of Earth, there's been many birth dates and records of this planet. The only reason we are confused because they have us trapped in time. They have us caught up in time. Which is why we're taught by the ancients, by our elders, 24 in number, that when you see the word time backwards, it's the word what? Emit. You must, be, you must remove that concept that they have given you of time and step out of that concept and step into universal time, for lack of a better word. Any other questions? Yes, um, I have basically a two-part question in reference to the um, what is spirit and what is soul school. Um, my first question is today, other than man-made, how many elements are there? On this planet? Yes. Okay. According to what your scientists are admitting that they have at this point, you have 115 elements today. Now, you said other than man-made, they say there's only 99 elements on this planet. Okay? Now it's interesting that you ask that because our elders have always taught us so there are those people who will say that all human life began here with some being named God or Allah or Theos or Yahweh or Adonai or whatever they choose to use today. However, there are people sitting here right now that have an element in their body called molybdenum that you don't find naturally on this planet. However, you do find molybdenum on the moon, you do find it, excuse me, not the moon, Mars, Saturn, and Jupiter, not the moon. Make sure that's clear. Overstood? Overstood. Okay. Um, my second question is, um, could you draw an atom of one of these 99 elements and prove to me um, if the element does or does not have a spirit or a soul? You're confusing. My question is, do elements no, no. have spirit or and do they have soul? When you say the word spirit, say it, everybody. Say it again. You're taking it from the Latin word spiritus. Spiritus only means personality. So you would say that the atomic whoa, 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 whoa. structure... We're not as smart as you. Give us a minute. When you say personality, all cells are thinking personality. All atoms have a personality. All uh, DNA, RNA, everything has a personality when you say spirit. Go ahead. So that would be their atomic number or atomic structure? When you get into atomic number, now you're dealing with how dense or undense a thing is or isn't. So that's why I'm asking, do they have spirit and do they have soul? They have a personality. Say the word soul. Soul. Say it again. From the word ruh. The word ruh or re in Hebrew simply means wind. That's all the key. Where they got us trapped again, sister, and everywhere, you should all understand this. They have us trapped and caught up on these words. The spell, say spell. Spell it. No, spell it. The spell or this incantation was placed on words. Because see, when we said spell it, what if someone said S-P-E-L? You would have said, no, that's not how you spell it. You understand? Phonetics, they trapped us in phonetics. Say phonetics. Say it again. What are you saying? You're saying phone ethics. The ethics of a phone. What's the ethics of a phone? Sound. This whole society and this language, or lack of thereof, that we're using, American, this jargon, is based upon the sound of things. This is why we were taught by our uh, head of this triad of Atom Ray. We've been taught by him and those 24 elders who also assist him and are with him, we've been taught by the 24 elders that it's important to go and let get the etymology of words. Everyone should have a dictionary that gives the etymology of words in their house. So that every time you, you have a question or someone tries to get you with something, the first thing you should go is, let's go to the word. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word. So where should we go? Word. To the word. Go to the word of things. This is why the Muslim world hates us so. This is why the Jewish world hates us so. This is why the Christian world and all these other fake things hate us so. Because we're the type of organization in writing the world that goes to the word. They'll say Allah. We say, wait a minute, Allah. Alif, Lam, Lam, Ha. Let's go to it. Let's break it down from the word Dilu. For example, everyone say Allah. Allah. Now the Muslims will say La, Ilaha, Illa, Allah. 
Well, as we were taught by our elders in 24 in number, when you say la e la ha, why everything is e, la ha, e, la, but when they get to Allah, then it becomes an a sound. Because see, if you said it the way it was originally, you would say la e la ha, e la, el elo. But they knew that the minute you would say that, then you say, hey, you must have been given birth to by the Jews. This must be a plot. So they trapped you in and removing you from having knowledge of words and got you caught up on one word called what? Believe. They got us believing. The first thing you meet people, regardless of what they accept or ascribe to or believe, the first thing they'll say is, you got to believe in something. And as the Wapi has been saying, where the hell is that written? Why do I got to believe? I don't see that in the Constitution. All men must believe in something. You understand? They'll say freedom of belief. Say that. We don't want freedom of belief. We want freedom from belief. We want this society, we want them to leave us alone so that we can build our society. Their problem is when they're addressing us, they're confusing that we, number one, we are a lodge. The ancient mystic order of Malakazoda. That's our lodge. They're confusing that with our religion as an Egyptian Christian organization of HTM. And then they're confusing that with all of the other orders and rights that we have. So they'll say, that Dr. Malachi, he's y'all leader and y'all worship him. No, no, no. Everybody in HTM is not a member of OM. Everybody in HTM is not a member of these different orders. So there's no way that everyone in HTM looks at him as their leader. Those of us who have been initiated or are seeking acceptance into the Lodge 19, that he is the 19th elder over, and there's 24 other lodges on this planet, this is nothing new. This is the same thing the ancient bees of Tamaray taught. When you go back there, they had the lost cities of Mu and Atlantis. They had Lumeria. They had Easter Island. Overstood? This is nothing new, but their problem is they want to give us a God complex but, but because of the fact that we're saying we're God. We're not saying Dr. Malachi is York's the only God. We're saying all of us are gods. And if you're one in, in a particular order, if you were a Freemason, you don't have a problem giving the dues, as you say, or your just respect to the Grand Master of your lodge. Well, those of us within the Lodge 19, then that's our Grand Master. There are those in Lodge 24, and they have a Grand Master. There's always been orders. As a triad of action rate, there's three of us. And from each of the triad comes three. This is all a part of our culture. But their problem is they're trying to judge three or four or different orders within our rights. See, when they heard culture, they thought our culture is their thing. Their culture is so simple. Believe in God. Believe in the Bible, the Quran, or the or Torah, and everything's fine. But in ancient Tamare or the Tamarian, when we or our descendants walked this planet, we had orders. Some called the school of Tehuti. They had the school of Bast. They had the school of Osiris. They had the school of Horus. This is why before you leave, everyone should go to the temple and walk through the temple of Imhotep and see these different tools and relics or ancient things. So you can see where they're coming from. Then you should walk on down to the, between the flags and look at each one of those deities and recognize that each one of those deities was a school of thought or a school of information. Overstood? So again, sister, and for everyone, whenever someone comes at you, make sure you go to the Word. That's why we, as the Nawapian nation of Morton, that's our, what's that? That's our nation. That's another branch. We as the Nawapian nation of Moors have always been hated, quite simply, because we're here to right the wrong. And with that, I'll let my brother come. Thank you. Brother, how you doing? Yes, um, my question is concerning beings who are allergic to seafood. Some can't eat seafood, and then there are also some who can't eat it, you know, up in, in a room where it's being cooked. Would you please elaborate on that? Somebody? You want to know why some people cannot eat seafood? Exactly. <laughs> and what quality? Okay. 
If I was to ask everybody in this uh, audience here, how many people would worship or observe a God that told you to eat human beings? Raise your hands. <laughs> how many people here, if I were to tell you that there is a God in the Bible that tells individuals to eat human beings, how many people would believe that? How many people would know it? <laughs> All right, see, that's more than four Now, you are allergic or you are anti eating human beings because you look at a human being as something of your own genetic makeup. Does that make sense to everybody? <laughs> you have other beings on the planet walking amongst, amongst us. Scientists, now, before we get into this, the reason why we do this, the reason why we bring up scientists and scientific discoveries is because we teach people and reach people as if they're skeptics, or as if they don't accept or believe or acknowledge what we have to say. So when we bring this information to individuals, we always have to go back to who? Him. And say, well, because he says this, you got to accept this. Since you don't accept what we say or what we're taught, we're going to give you his verification. Well, scientists, a scientist by the name of Dr. Jonathan A. Jensen, just discovered the Lystrosaur dinosaur, an ancient dinosaur which proves two things to us as Nawabi. See, we like this. We like it when the scientists come with information and verify what we've been saying or what we've been taught by our 24 elders since 1970. Don't y'all like that? Yeah. Now, let's hear, what they, let's hear what this guy has to say. They discover a Lystrosaur, and they say that this Lystrosaur is a reptilian, but has mammalian traits in it. What does this mean? There are no reptilians that they're showing you today, according to them, that have mammalian traits in them. But yet they discover two dinosaurs, another one called what? The Demetrodon, another reptilian. How many people here, raise your hands if you've heard of the Demetrodon? The Demetrodon, a reptilian that has human traits in it. What does this mean? This means that there's some type of evolution taking place on the planet. Because they just found, in the Museum of Ottawa, they just found what's called the Stenon Ichiosaurus. In that word, Ichiosaurus, you hear what words? Two words, Ichio and what word? What does the word Ichio mean? Everybody, y'all been reading the books, right? What does Ichios mean? Ichios means fish. What does Saurus mean? From the word dinosaur, a lizard, a huge lizard. They've discovered that two children in India are suffering, and individuals across the world are suffering from these diseases called Ichiosaurus, which is a fish lizard disease. How is it possible for human beings to have a fish lizard disease? Can somebody help me out here? What's that? Somebody said it. Because there has to be fish lizard DNA or some type of reptilian trait inside of human beings today. There has to be. The evolution of man, when they studied in this Museum of Ottawa, the Stenon Ichiosaurus, they discovered that it went back 63 billion years ago. And they found out that there was an ice age that took place around that same time, of 65 billion years ago, and this wiped out this dinosaur man and the original beings who used to dwell on this planet Earth. Now they find out that there's other life forms on the planet that didn't get wiped out. Because ice ages only affect certain parts of the planet. And these beings that didn't get wiped out became your human reptilians. Because they knew how to go underneath the water and survive. These human reptilians, or these human reptiles, are none other than us. <laughs> Sitting here today. Which is why you can look at your hand. We broke this down last week. You can look at your hand and see what between your fingers? Webs. Now look at your knuckles. What do you see? You see scales. Whether you get ashy or not, you still see these scales showing that there's some type of mixture or some type of what? Evolution taking place. The ancient Egyptians knew this. The ancient Tamarians knew that there was some type of evolution taking place. How do you know they knew this? If you go back to the 12th dynasty in ancient Egypt and research the husband of Hathor, you'll find out that the husband of Hathor's name was what? Sobek. Who was Sobek, y'all? in ancient Egypt, the crocodile deity. Why would we have a crocodile deity in ancient Egypt? Because that crocodile deity 
represented the point in time when we were on all fours as the Mitra Dome. Guess what? I ran over my time with the grace of CB2 stars. But sorry you couldn't hear the whole of the tape. But this Wednesday, between the hours of 11 and 1, this shadow hour, you can get the part 2 of that tape, alright? And what I might do, I might recap it from the last half of part 2, side, um, take 1, side 2, the last half, then we're going to play the part 2. All willing, okay, this coming Wednesday, shadow hours, between the hours of 11 and 1. Alright, I'm going to leave you in the capable hands of the CB2000. Remember, you without sin cast the first stone, and the CB2000 has just spoken so wisely in the studio, a saying that I love. Uh, you're putting down other people, knocking other people. But can you really cast the first stone? Okay, I'll be in the studio for another five minutes or so. The telephone number is 0795-777-5477. Remember, 1222 each and every weekday, Monday to Friday, there's an educational show on the 916. Also, Saturday mornings between the hours of 6 and 9. Also, uh, 1222 on a Saturday. And also... 10 to 12 most definitely on a Saturday night. Also, Sunday mornings, okay, between the hours of 6 and 9. And don't forget, the big one, 10 to 1, Sunday OG. Mr. Rebel, I'm out of the place. Remember, catch me, shadow hours, okay? 11 to 1, Minister Rebel saying peace. I feel no way if the phone lines are a little busy at the moment. A mystery man, would you like to call us in the studio or on my personal line? Okay, that's urgently, mystery man, gets a call on my personal line. I'm out of here, peace.